Hello everyone, today we are going to mine. And if you already know this channel, you might suspect that when I say we, I actually mean these guys. Yes, today we are sending 32 bots strip mining for 24 hours straight. They don't eat, they don't sleep, and they don't watch YouTube videos, they just mine. If you are just here for the answer and don't want to watch the full video, the answer is 37,177 diamond ore blocks and a bit of coal. But uh, not all bots were mining diamonds, as we'll see later in the video. So now that we saw the what, let's skip to the interesting part and check the how, starting by the return station. The return station is the place where the bots drop all the items they collected and get new tools. There is an additional bot here that serves as a manager and mostly as a button presser. Whenever a bot needs to come back, because it doesn't have all the tools anymore, or because its inventory is full, it whispers the bot manager here, and the manager will then press the corresponding button. This will flip the trapdoor and make the mining bot come back using an underpearl stasis chamber. Once it's back, the mining bot places all the collected ore blocks in the massive storage below, then it dumps all the other items in a trash chest and takes a new set of gear from the green shulker box. As this is a mining focused video, we don't deal with the box preparation here, and it's just a Minecraft command cloning a reference box from there. But theoretically, you could also have another bot repairing items with an XP farm and preparing the shulker boxes, but it's outside of the scope of this video. Once the bot has retrieved the new items, it places them in the under chest and reloads the stasis chamber with a new pearl. We use the game rule to make the pearl stay alive when the bot dies so it can use it to come back. Then the bot walks towards its death on a point in dripstone to get back to the mine. After its death, the bot respawns in the mine next to its bed as if nothing ever happened. There, it can subscribe to the channel to get notifications for any new bot videos and pick up the items in the under chest and break its bed before continuing mining. As the goal is to study how much holes can be gathered by strip mining, I artificially added some constraints to which blocks a bot is allowed to mine. So first, even if they could, the bots are not allowed to use any kind of X revision, which means that they can only mine blocks that are directly visible from the mining tunnel or exposed after collecting another ore block. For example, in this situation, the bots would be allowed to collect the two diamond ores, as the first one is directly visible from the mining tunnel, and the second one is exposed after mining the first one. But the redstone ore block would not be collected, as it's behind a deep slate block, and thus hidden to the bot. And the second constraint is regarding the range of the bots. I wanted the results to stay quite correlated to the height at which the bot was deployed, so the bot can only mine what's directly in range from the center of the mining tunnel. In Vanilla Minecraft, this is 4.5 blocks from the player, so any block outside of this sphere is ignored. This prevents the bot from following a large ore vein that could continue for many blocks over many different Y levels and skew the results. And that's it. The bot will follow these two rules, and when no ore is accessible, then it mines the next block in front of it to advance by one, and so on and so on. Every 16 blocks, it also adds a torch on the ground, so the tunnel is properly lit for us humans. When it needs to come back, it places the bed and under chest, and sends a message to the manager to get brought back. But we already saw this part before. There are 8 different types of ore in the overworld in Minecraft, each with a stone and a deep slit variant. Depending on your Y coordinate, you can find different amounts of each ore. For this project, my goal was not to get as many diamonds as possible, so I decided to spread the bots between Y equal minus 59 and Y equal 85 to see how different would be the results for each bot. The graph on the screen shows the number of each collected ore per bot. The left axis is the Y level, and the horizontal axis represents the number of blocks collected during the 24 hour session for each ore. As we can see, there is a clear separation between the deep slate ores for negative Y and regular ores above, with a small transition around zero. As there is a lot of curves on the graph, I will show the individual graph for each type of ores. Feel free to pause the video if you want to take a closer look at any of them. We can also look at the same data using a stacked bar chart. Here, you can see for all the bots the amount of each ore they collected. This way, you can easily see where you need to mine depending on what you want. For example, 
if you are looking for diamonds, going below y equal minus 40 is the way to go. But instead, if you want a lot of stone copper ore, you should rather go between the layers 20 and 40. If we go back to the world after the mining, we can see these long tunnels under the surface with a torch every 16 blocks. When the bot went through water or lava, they used dirt to prevent fluids from flowing inside the mining area. So now, under the ocean, we have these long dirt pipes and you can travel inside without ever touching the water. And for the bots that were mining above ground, there is now some very long dirt bridges crossing the sky, sometimes passing through trees or mountains. This time lapse shows the distance the bot traveled from the first second to the 24 hours mark. As expected, the bots above ground travel faster as they don't need to mine many blocks, but not that much faster as they also need to get back to the station more often to refill their inventory with dirt. After 24 hours, they traveled more than 200,000 meters, which is the equivalent of approximately 5 full marathons. As the bots that are just below the surface need to go through a lot of oceans and lakes, they need to place even more dirt blocks and as such are the slowest of the bots. They still travel the equivalent of two full marathons in one day, all that while building underwater infrastructure. All the collected ore blocks are nicely stored in the chest at the return station. As each bot has a dedicated storage column, we can see the same distribution of ores here as we previously saw on the graphs, evolving with the mining Y level. Once placed, all the ores represent this big structure we already saw in the introduction. This is the total amount of ore collected by all the bots. As previously said, this is not maximized for diamonds. If all the bots would have mined at optimal depths for diamonds, this is what it would have looked like instead. With 122,592 diamonds ore blocks collected, this is enough to fill almost 71 shulker boxes with diamond ores. And also, just before ending this video, during the 24 hours, the bots didn't mine only ore blocks, but a very diverse set of blocks, amongst which almost 3 million deep slate blocks, 2 million stone, 69 wax oxidized cut copper stairs, 11 spawners, 3 vaults, 1 bee nest, and a lot of other stuff. And that's it. This is what 32 bots mine for 24 hours. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and to subscribe if you don't want to miss the next one. Goodbye!